What's up? Okay, so you got Patrick here, and um, I wanted to talk about screaming a little bit. And um, I'm literally just waking up. You can see my hair is wet, my beard's wet. Just took a shower. Um, but I want to talk about screaming and warming up and cooling down because this is one of the, the topics that I think a lot of people just completely miss. Um, if you're screaming, okay, if you're screaming as in, um, you know, the fry scream and the death metal scream, it's actually almost more important to do a long, long cool down than it is to warm up. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't warm up. I'm just saying that it's more important to do a cool down because if you don't do a cool down, then your warm up the next day is going to be really, really, really tough because you're going to build up. Okay, so first of all, what happens when you scream is your cords kind of scrape against each other. Okay. Now you can build up a little bit of scar tissue. That's not really a problem. A lot of people try and say it is. It's, it's really not. Um, it'll be a problem in say 20 years down the road when your voice is more raspy than a normal person's, but whatever, we're trying to sing with rasp anyways. Um, but what's really a problem is when you scrape your cords when you're screaming, okay, and your cords build up with all sorts of fluids to try and protect whatever's happening to them, okay, and then the scar tissue forms around that fluid that's in the cords, and you develop nodules, you develop some real, real problems. And so the way that we keep you, first of all, from getting nodules is by doing a good cool down. And the way that you do that is by doing these tongue trills after the show, after the set, after you're done screaming, whatever it is, okay? You just go like this. All the way down to the vocal fry, okay? Now the chords are um, shrinking in size as you're doing that. And whatever junk that you've built up on there is then going to be squeezed out of the cords in a sense. That's kind of the concept. So you're you're stretching the cords out, okay? Stretching them out. And bringing them more to a flaccid um what do you call it? flaccid Jesus. Um and that's going to help the cords out. My nose freaking edges got some allergies here. <clears throat> that's gonna clean the cords off. You wanna do that for say 20 to 30 minutes after you're done singing. And I don't care what people say. It's just through an ooh. Just nice and easy. Do that for like 30 minutes. Watch some TV show, whatever it might be. And the next day, you're going to wake up and you're going to feel like you've already warmed up, like your voice is already ready to go. You'll have a good 10, 20, 30 minute warm up and you'll be ready to sing. You'll be ready to do the show. Okay. Rather than doing a two hour warm up and potentially not being able to sing, um, which is pretty commonplace if you scream. Um, yesterday I was doing this, this song, which I didn't think was doing as much to my voice as it did. I was singing, um, uh, what is it? Gasoline by Audio Slave. And I was going to try and cover this song. And he's got a lot of really, really brutal screams in there. And it was a lot of fun. I'm like, wow, you know, if I sing it this small, it actually sounds bigger. Um, and so I was going through the different techniques and I just kept going at it. I just kept working on this one part and kept going through it. And I'm like, wow, I can sing the entire song. And um, at the end of the night, I did a small cool down for maybe about five minutes at the most. And then I wake up today and my voice is definitely feeling it. I didn't cool down nearly enough. It was a very, very long, difficult um, I would say about an hour to an hour, hour and a half warm up that I had to do. And, um, you know, I had to make sure that I was ready for the lesson that I had and, uh, I was able to do it. I was able to do the lesson. Um, but if I ever have to demonstrate going into the upper register and I've been doing stuff like that the night before, I'm going to go up and there's just going to be, it's going to sound like I'm screaming. You just get this kind of natural rasp in there, which you do not want. The natural rasp will turn into nodules. Okay. And so you don't want that. Now, if you have some of that when you first warm up, when you first wake up, that's fine. That's just junk on the throat. That's just, that's all that it is. Okay. It's fluids on the throat. It's, it's phlegm, it's dust. It's all sorts of different particles that are built up in the throat. You got to get all that stuff off of there. And that's why we do the lip bubbles. That's why we do. Okay. We do that type of stuff through an, oh, okay. You just do the, the, the stretch exercise. Try to not use your hands here. Some people you see it. Okay. 
you don't really want to do that. Um, it's not quite the right technique. But um, you do that stuff enough, okay, when you first warm up. And I recommend if you're singing rock music to do it for about 20 minutes before you start trying to warm up the voice. Just do those exercises. Um, do the lip bubbles. Do the uh, the tongue trills if you want to do those as well. Um, although I recommend doing lip bubbles. I think it's a better it's a better exercise for warming up. Um, do those for 20 minutes before you even start trying to sing any kind of notes, okay? And you want to do that. That specific one is probably the best one because it goes up, holds it there, and then falls back down and stretches and gets it. So it's kind of like getting the stuff off, okay, and then the chords change position, and then that stuff just kind of falls off, okay? It's, it's a very, very effective exercise for cleaning off the chords with the lip bubbles like that. You've got long scales. You've got all sorts of different scales. Okay, which I wasn't able to do there. It's two octaves, arpeggios right there. Okay, and that's a pretty effective scale for warming up as well, for getting your chords cleaned off. But that's really the battle that you're going to have if you're screaming. If you scream, if that's what you've got to do, your warm up is going to be longer. Okay, I know Axl Rose when he was singing for Guns N' Roses, he would do a three hour warm up. When he was when he was younger, he probably does something similar to that today. Um, that's just the name of the game. Um, Sebastian Bach, he warms up an hour every single time before a show. Um, his voice is very raspy; it's been beat up a lot, and he can still do it. Um, David Draymond's another guy, same thing. He'll warm up for a good hour before the show, um, and that's just what he does. That's what these guys do. The guys that really do a lot of screaming, they warm up a lot. And the other thing that I would say is that if you're going to be screaming and you've got to do it, you're on a tour and you've got to keep screaming, you've got to keep going, don't push your voice during the shows. Like, wait till the festival to push your voice. Okay? It's loud as fuck on the microphone. You don't have to push your voice as hard as you might think. Wait until the big shows where everybody's going to be out there with their cell phones putting it up on YouTube. Just make sure that you can get through the show. Make sure you can get through the month, get through the tour. Okay? And so I wait for the big festivals, if, if you even play them. And even then, I mean, it's, don't blow out your voice. Don't push it too hard. I mean, you can scream to the point where your voice will just be kind of raspy like this. And I've done it. I've done it. I do, I do it all the time, to be honest. And I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, there's some problems going on there. Let's bring these things back to normal. And I'll sit there for an hour or so just doing lip bubbles or tongue trills. And um, that's just the nature of the beast. I mean, you listen to Steven Tyler, for example. He still can do it. He's had surgery on his voice a couple of times, but he still can do it. And if you want to avoid surgery, you've got to clean off your cords. You've got to cool down. And another thing, the reason why we start out like, and then go all the way down to the vocal fry is because that brings the voice back down to a speaking level. And speaking after you've been singing can shock the vocal cords. Okay. And so that's just the it's the nature of the beast. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. If you're going to be doing rock music, it's going to be a longer warm up to maintain your voice. And are you going to run into problems, you know, say 20, 30 years down the road after you've been screaming like this? Well, you're probably going to have a raspy voice. <laughs> that's probably going to be the case. I mean, you listen to like Phil Anselmo, for example, raspy voice. Okay, smokes cigarettes. That's probably more the uh, the culprit in this particular case um, for Phil Anselmo. And he did a lot of other things too. I think we all know that. Um, I'm trying to think of somebody who's really screamed a lot and just his voice is just completely messed up. Um, I mean, screaming is not the healthiest thing for your voice. You just have to know that. But you can be healthy with it by making sure that you clean off the cords when you're done. You can do, you can do it for a while. You'll sustain yourself for a while. And honestly, I, I kind of don't care if I'm singing when I'm in my 60s or 70s. I kind of don't care. <laughs> That's just me. I, I like screaming too much. I like the youthful energy. And at that particular point in my life, I hope that I've moved on to something Something different at that point, you know? I don't want to still be that guy that's like, okay, well, back in my day, we used to do this crazy punk rock music, you know? <laughs> Hope that's not the case. But uh, anyways, that's my advice for today. And uh, once again, if, you are, uh, if, you've, uh, if you're interested in lessons, go down to my website, um, songrocker.net, um, and you'll just click on Skype lessons there. I do Skype lessons. That's most, mostly what I do. Um, and then uh, I would also recommend getting my product, The Elements of Singing, um, before you come in and take a lesson so you have a good basis to work with. What, what I really hate doing is having a singer come in and then I've got to go over all the basics and, you know, it, it's, it's just kind of a waste of, of, of your time, really. Um, and then it's also kind of a waste. It's not like, well, I mean, 
I'm getting, I'm making money. Okay, that's that's fine. But um, I want to make the most of your time, and I want to make the most of my time as well. And so if you've already got a fairly good understanding of the technique, and you're coming in, then we'll be able to go right away into um, figuring out what sound we want to do, um, what direction we want to take the voice, and then going through different exercises to keep the voice strong. Okay, and, in, and generally speaking, if it's your first lesson with me, I'm just going to give you a bunch of exercises for you to do, and uh, we're just going to go through it like that, and um, we'll, we'll go from there. We'll see what happens. But uh, anyways, that is it. Over and out. <laughs>